guys so it's tag tuesday and it's been a good long while since i've done a tag and so um i thought i would do the nonfiction book tag this was created by shandy standfast and i saw it on steve donahue's channel and funnily enough i was um tagged um in the uh top 10 favorites of nonfiction, and i've been putting that off i'm well aware i need to do it but i just i cannot pick my favorite books, especially nonfiction, like, ah, so um, I wasn't tagging in this one, but um, it will be easier for me to, to answer the questions. And there's a multitude of questions um, in each one, even though they're numbered one through 10. So I'm not really going to talk about the number I'm on. I'm just going to go through them. Um, let's see. The first one is what subject or area of nonfiction did you begin with? Was it history, biography, science, economics, archaeology, anthropology, etc.? And so I started off with focusing on the Civil War um, era. I grew up in Virginia um, about 45 minutes away from Appomattox where the Civil War ended. And so as you can imagine, I um, grew surrounded by um, Civil War um, events all around me. Like just driving around town, you would see signs like Civil War Trail this way. And so um, I, as of now, I, as now and like in the past, I, as a kid, I loved um, going hiking. And so when I went, when, it, when I would go out in the woods, I was always like imagining um, like my footsteps, like imagining other people, like their feet were going through the same path. And like, you know, was I stepping on their, on their uh, path? Like what, what they, what, what the ground that they were um, standing on. So like that kind of gave me goosebumps as a kid. And so, yeah, I've always been intrigued uh, by history. And so uh, the uh, next question is, was there a specific event, person, or book that set you on your path? Um, but yet, no, it was just uh, me being surrounded by history. And also, like, um, the Revolutionary War um, was played a, a big part in, in Virginia. And so um, there was a lot of that um, as well. Um, where did you get your first books from to feed your new passion? Was it a library, borrow from friends or family, or purchasing? Um, so no one in my family reads. I, I'm the oddball of the group. I'm the only reader. Um, and, um, so uh, my first time, like, independently buying a book, like, outside of school was, um, at Barnes & Noble. This is, like, well, like, years and years before I found BookTube or knew how to really search on the internet. I was just browsing, uh, the Barnes & Noble shelves and, and found a, um, a big, chunky, uh, Civil War book, um, with, you know, had lots of pic pictures in it. And that's where I started. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it was like one of those like Civil War, like, you know, the compendium, compendium of like, you know, all, all the years and all the figures and all the you know big battles and things like that. Um, did you have any guidance from anyone? No, I did not. I wish I, I wish I did. But um, yeah, I just kind of like found my own my own path with it. Um, is your first love still the love of your of your nonfiction reading life? Or was it a gateway to other subjects that took over as number one? So I started with Civil War history, and for sure it was a gateway for me, because um, that was what I was most comfortable with. Um, and then I branched off to, to really focus on American history. I do read um, lots of um, European history, but in world history, but um, I feel like most comfortable in uh, U.S. history. I hope to eventually be able to branch out to um, to learn more. Be, but I, I feel like like my excuse, if you will, is what I hear a lot of people talk about when they um, are like, afraid to dip their toes into nonfiction. It's like, where do I start? And so for me, there's just there's so um, much to um, to focus on with European history that I'm like, where do, where do I begin? Like all those kings and queens and like I'm mixing them up their names and <laughs> things like that. But um, for sure, like I want to um, learn a lot more about um, World War Two. That's um, outside of U.S. history, like, a, that's a, um, another, like, favorite topic of mine to, to read about, so, like, going from there, then I can probably, like, you know, make my way, um, trickling into, to other things, and let's see, and sorry for looking down, looking at my phone with questions, um, so I got that one, and then it says, okay, so did you pursue any of your interests with formal education at university level? If so, what level did you finish, and was it the experience that you had hoped for and expected? Um, so I, in college, I was initially a history major, but I changed my major because I didn't want to be a teacher and I didn't want to like write um, academic texts or anything like that. So I didn't know what to do with it. Um, I would love, love to work in the, you know, with history in, in some in some shape or form, but yeah, I didn't know, you know, what, what I could do with it. And so I, I switched. Um, and then... Um, have you made it your profession? No, I guess you know I haven't. Um, let's see, number five. Um, if you have maintained that first interest all of your life, do you feel you should have pursued other interests or subjects? And so outside of uh, history specific to that, um, I uh, have branched off to uh, read lots of uh, nature books and um, I've read some uh, political books and, and uh, biographies and um, like I haven't really touched self-help 
self-help books that much. I've read some psychology books, but um, I would say like my history books are, are like my are my number one, like history biography. I think I can put them all together. <laughs> but like Again, I can't pick anything, but I would say nature writing is like right up there, like not tied for number one, but, but for sure um, has a place in my heart for that. Um, let's see, number six. Are you now a specialist and read only within one area of nonfiction or do you branch out? Um, so that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to um, go on and, you know, get a MA in history or anything like that because I didn't want to be pigeonholed in one subject to study all my life. Like, I like all of it. Just give me all of it. I'll read it. I'll be happy. You know, I, <laughs> it's like I take my, my own education with, with nonfiction. So, yeah, I haven't... Um, picked anything specific um or you know specialized in anything uh, do you read fiction yes I do I read lots of fiction I'm sure if you watch um any of my videos you'll see I, I'll, I'll read anything um if so what genre do you turn to when you want something lighter or different to read um and so really like I, I, I mean I don't really plan out my reading that much like it's just it's just what comes up on my uh, on my library the Libby app like whatever I, I place a bunch of holds and then whatever comes in and what's do what's do next I'll read so I'll, I can go from historical fiction to poetry to um, mystery to history biography whatever it's a it's a it's an unending <laughs> role that, you know, like I'm just going through um, um, let's see number seven if you are a specialist or not do you prefer academic studies general works or scholarly scholarly but not overly academic. Um, I for sure uh, tend to go with more of the um, like general for the written for the general public, um, just because that's um, what I have easier access to. Um, I have read um, a couple of books that were published by academic um, publishers, but um, that's for sure not the the main of what I read. Just because yeah, I don't have like a nice bookstore to go to <laughs> to to find those, and I don't really um, purchase books online I, I just read ebooks e so yeah those um what my library has and so yeah um but I, that is something I would um like to look into um especially if I you know read like a general topic that I know a lot about and I want to get into more of that nitty-gritty then I think going with an academic text um would be handy let's see number eight do you collect books in your area of interest or do you read and pass the books on sell or borrow almost exclusively from the library um so do I collect books um in my area of interest Yes and no, really no. I mean, I, I when I, when I had physical books, um, I I did have you know a, a, a set couple shelves for nonfiction and history, but um, I've now sh shifted over to predominantly uh, ebooks. But I thought I would show you some of the books that I have um, on my shelves that are the, that are the remaining, the ones that I have left to read. Um, and but yeah, as far as collecting, I don't collect any books. Um, for like a value, I don't set a value to any of them, um, just because I, I don't have the money to purchase any of these, uh, you know, really expensive books. If I happen to find one, like a, something that's a value at a um, at a used bookstore or at a, a at a thrift shop, um, I I wouldn't know, <laughs> and, and I don't pay attention to that. Um, but for some of the books I um, that are related to U.S. history, um, the Great Upheaval, America, and the Birth of the Modern World, a 1788 through 1800 by J. Winnick. And I'm not really going to give a description, but yeah, the title kind of explains it. Um, then I have My Dearest Friend, Letters of Abigail and John Adams. Um, this was edited by Margaret A. Hogan and K, I mean, C. James Taylor. Then I have two books on Stonewall, Stonewall Jackson, um, Thomas J. Stonewall, that um, <laughs> I don't know why I have two of them, but I, cause, uh, he's an interesting figure of the Civil War, but he's for sure not my favorite. Um, Stonewall in the Valley, uh, Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson's Shenandoah Valley Campaign, uh, Spring 1862 by Robert G. Tanner. And um, I grew up right near the Shenandoah Valley. And so that's also outside of Virginia. That's also like, like a soft place in my heart. And so, yeah, <laughs> reading a, a book about that, uh, his campaign, um, it, it, it's good. Uh, I can't talk. It's good. Yeah, no, it, it's interesting to me. And then this big hefty thing, uh, Stonewall Jackson, the American, um, and the American Civil War by um, Lieutenant Colonel G.F.R. Henderson, C.B. Um, and this wasn't what I paid for. This is just what sticker it, it came on. And it's it's really big. I think that's why um, <laughs> it's been sitting on my shelf too long. I mean, so long. But it didn't qualify as a mammoth. I wish it, it was like it didn't count. It was because um, mammoths are like over 800. So I was looking at to read this 
um, in a March of the Mammoth, but it's uh, 400, I mean, 518 pages, but it's just, like, each page is like kind of thick, and so it makes the book really heavy. Um, so yeah, those are the books, um, like the only like, U.S. history books I have left on my shelves uh, to get to. And um, it's not that I don't want to get to them, it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. I, um, cause like I said, mentioned with uh, reading library books, they're constantly like pressuring me to, to read them because they're due soon. And so like, and I focus more on them than I do my actual, my, my actual physical books. But one of my um, New Year's resol resolutions was to read all of my physical books this year. Because I, I only have like, I don't know, like 18 left. So it's... It's silly. I, I can get to them. So yeah, I'm putting a focus on, on reading them. Um, in a way. Uh, let's see what the next question is. Scrolling down. Okay. Um, do I read them and pass um, books on or do I um, pass books on or do I sell them? Um, I don't, I'm not, like I said, I don't put a value on books. So like, um, I'm, not, I'm not in the market to make money on them. So um, often I'll just drop them off at my little free library um, around the, here in the area or I will um, like donate them um, to a charity shop. And then it says, um, um, or do you, um, you borrow almost exclusively from the library? Yes, N now I do. I, um, but with nonfiction books, um, I don't just read like books that are new releases. I do also read um, books that were published you know, long in the past. And so for those, um, I, um, I keep a list on Goodreads of, um, of like history and nonfiction. I break it out. And so if I want to read something, I, I will uh, purchase a physical book. Um, for example, like the Stonewall, um, the Stonewall in the Valley, I don't think that was an ebook. And so I will search and uh, buy those. Um, most of them online um, in physical format. Let's see. Um, if you do collect, do you prefer hardcover or paperback? Um, I, I like reading in paperback the most, but if it's something I'm going to keep, I prefer it in hard hardcover because I think it, it, just, it just lasts longer. Um, so yeah, I don't really answer the question, but, um, but yeah, I, again, I don't collect. So I don't really I think it really applies to me. And it says, um, do they need to be first editions in fine condition or are you happy with X library copy and or underlining in them? Um, I would like them to be in uh, a better condition than, than a horrible condition, but um, I, ha I have been known to pick up books that um, are kind of like falling apart. I'll just tape them up and then, and then oh yeah, because it's still, I can still read it. Um, <laughs> but it's not something that I would buy. If I see that, I'm talking about like if I find it at, um, for like, like a dollar or at a little free library, then, then I'll pick it up and, and not really mind. Um, as long as I, as soon as I, as long as there isn't like really bad like water damage or things like that and underlining um underlining i'm okay with because i feel like people don't underline as much as they do highlight i, I can't stand highlighting um if it's every now and then okay I, I can read it but i'm not gonna buy a book like that's something i would pick up really cheap or again for the love of your life if it was like that but uh, but yeah um let's see number nine do you read collect ex read do you read collect exclusively newer publications or do you enjoy reading what writers had to say on your subject in the past as well um yeah i think i've already answered that uh, previously um I, I like it all um i think i i mostly since i read um a lot of ebooks um most of the books i read are um published probably with from the 2000 on but um the library i have like they've, they've been pretty good with getting older titles like converted to ebook but yeah again a lot from like from probably from like the 80s back um I, I have to get them on in physical formats um and then it says what is the oldest book you have either original edition or reprint of an older work and um I think that was it, this wouldn't be a nonfiction book um it's one of the Newbery books that I found um I think from like the 1960s is it, or 50s it's the oldest book I have I'm pretty sure yeah um He's like, yeah, I don't collect anything in it, and I, I, I don't pay attention to that. Um, it says, number 10, what was the most you have ever paid for a book in your main area of interest? Was it new or used? And <laughs> probably um, nowadays, like um, maybe like $10 well, when I pay for a, a, a book. But in my past, like, I think, I think ever, have I ever paid for a book? Um it, Nonfiction books, um, I think are overpriced. Like I know all, I feel like all books are overpriced, but nonfiction books, I feel like are, are on a whole nother level. Like the ones I've seen are like at least, like at least $40, if not 50. Um, but I haven't bought any of them in any of, in, in the recent, uh, years. Um, but yeah, I think the la probably the last one <laughs> I bought was maybe like $30, 35. Um, 
<laughs> so yeah, um, those are that's my answers to the questions. I'm not gonna tag anyone because I've seen all this tag go around, so I'm not sure people who read nonfiction have they already done this tag or not. But yeah, if you, if you read nonfiction and you want to give this uh, tag a go, then uh, yeah, uh, feel free. So thanks. I'll see you soon in book two.